Moms who know do less so they can focus on what matters most, taking care of themselves, their families, and living their God-given purpose. Moms who know focus on the little things they can do that grow to have a huge impact. You are connecting with your family, your true self, and your God-given purpose. You are a mom who knows. Thanks for joining us today on this episode of Moms Who Know. Today is a Couples Who Know episode with James and I. And today we're going to talk about a book that we recently read. Interestingly, um, I don't know that I recommend this book. I don't know that I, I love it. But there are some really good points in this book and some things that we felt like were valuable to share with you. And so we wanted to share those points with you. And then if you guys want to go read it, you definitely can. It's called Love and Respect by Emerson Egerix. Is that how you think you pronounce it? Yeah. All right. We'll go with that Egerix then. So this book is all about two things, love and respect. And it's written by a former pastor and... um, he bases most of the, this book on a scripture, and this is found in Ephesians 5.33. Nevertheless, let, any, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife so that she reverence her husband. And then in the footnotes, it says respect. And also in the NIV, it says respect instead of reverence. So I just wanted to point that out because that is what this whole book is based on. And he says that also in the title, the love she most desires and the respect he desperately needs. So that is what we're going to talk a little bit about today, what this book is about. And his idea here is that women and men have really different primary needs. And a woman's primary need is to feel loved. She wants to feel that love from her husband. And for a man, he wants to feel really respected. So the whole idea here is that When women are not feeling that love from their husband, when men are not feeling that respect from their wife, that's when marital problems kind of creep in. And we need to be really aware of the fact that our spouse has different needs than we do. So that idea is really helpful. And we're going to talk about what stood out to us and what we think, you know, this idea can help to transform in our marriage. So James is going to first start off by talking a little bit about something that Mr. Egerix calls the crazy cycle. You know, I I like this whole idea of the crazy cycle that he explains because it makes sense to me. The basic idea is that he reacts without love, the man, and the woman reacts without respect. And it's just picture this circle in your mind with these arrows going in a circular motion just with those two thoughts. He reacts without love. She reacts without respect. And... um. I think it makes sense because sometimes we we feel that and we get into this terrible cycle and it's it's so dangerous. And the thing that I really wanted to convey to all of you is how to get out of this vicious cycle that he points out. And he talked about, so who's going to go first? Who's going to break this cycle here? And he says, the one that's most mature. And to me, that means that can be the husband or the wife, um, depending on who's going to be the most mature at the moment. And uh, I I just thought that that was really interesting because a lot of us have to swallow our pride and just sometimes take the first step. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about why he points out that respect is so important for men. And um, I think that as, as a man... Uh, when you're not respected, you just feel so deflated, so defeated. And I think men can sometimes be a little sensitive and take things as not being respectful when there was not that intent, right, from their spouse. So I think we need to be a little bit careful about that, guys, on not feeling so sensitive about not being respected. But there there are some cases out there, I think, that um, really are. Uh, valid where men don't feel respected and on the flip side where women really don't feel loved at all. So uh, in a little bit here, we'll, we'll talk about how we can get past this crazy cycle, but that in a nutshell is what it is. 
Okay, so that's a great definition and kind of explains what what we're sometimes in as couples. And I think that a lot of us can relate to that. And I think to me, the thing that stands out the most is the idea of reacting. He reacts when he doesn't feel respected and she reacts when she doesn't feel loved. And I think that for me, for most of us, we don't want to be in a reactive state. That another word for that I would say is codependent. And what that means is when someone acts in a certain way, then you automatically, you know, go from this script that you have. What we want is to not be reactive. We want to act. We want to choose how we're going to behave. Okay, I am going to treat my spouse this way instead of wait and see what they do and then react to that. And I think and in marriages, because there's so much history and there's so much context and there's all this background that we are sometimes just going in these patterns that we've already been in a hundred times and we're finding ourselves just reacting and doing the same thing over and over. And that's why this is called a crazy cycle. So one of the ways this manifests with couples is that the wife will feel like something is wrong and she needs to talk about something. And so she'll come to her husband and explain something But sometimes husbands listen to that and hear that explaining as contempt. So they hear this criticism as a direct attack on their character and a direct hit on their respect. And so in response, they will turn away, they'll stop talking, they'll kind of shut down the conversation. But for women, that silence feels totally unloving. It's like, you don't even care enough to talk to me about this. Like, this is so important to me. Don't you love me enough to talk about this? I'm thinking of where this has been in our marriage and where that's come up and maybe not that those words, you know, you don't love me enough. I don't think I've heard that from my wife, but I can think back to points where I'll say, Oh, I don't know what to say. Like, what do you want me to say? (laughs) <laughs> and, and that's the shutdown. And I think that most men might have a hard time expressing those feelings of um, how they feel disrespected or whatever the case may be. And so they do. They just they just feel so shut down. And that is so disrespectful to to women that when we're not talking to them, they just feel so shut out and so unloved that it, it's so important that guys, you have to dig deep down sometimes to talk to try to express and let your wife know that what you're feeling is real and and try to put your feelings into words sometimes that's the hardest part but i think that when when you reflect when you take that time to ask yourself really what's wrong and find the find the words and um they'll come and that's really a step in the right direction Totally. And, and even just staying in the conversation, James mentioned, you know, sometimes he would say, Oh, I don't know what to say. Like, what do you want me to say? And as women, it's like, say anything, just, just have the conversation, talk to me. And I hear that from so many friends that their husbands don't want to discuss it. Like, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You're making a big deal out of nothing. And that just is so hard for women. We feel so shut down. Now, interestingly enough, this book, one of the things that I really loved about it is this. So often when we talk about marriage, one of the things that goes through my mind and some of the things that some of you have reached out to me and said, you know, I like your ideas and I like what you're saying, but my husband's not on board. So what can I do if my husband's not on board? And I feel like kind of, this book has a really good solution to that. And like James mentioned, it only takes one of you, the one who's more mature, to step off of this crazy cycle, to stop reacting, and to start a new cycle. And so that new cycle is something he calls the energizing cycle. The energizing cycle is that his love, the husband's love, motivates her respect and her respect motivates his love. So you're getting on this different cycle. And it's an interesting cycle because instead of being a reactive cycle, it's an active cycle. It's saying, okay, I am choosing to respect my husband and he is choosing 
hopefully he's going to choose to love me and to show his love right back. As a husband, same thing. I'm going to choose to show my love to my wife and hopefully she's going to choose to show her respect right back to me. I think the hard part about that is is when the other person doesn't reciprocate, right? So you are trying to get out of the cycle and you keep showing the love in, in one way or the other and the other person is not showing it back. But there's so many examples in this book that indicate when you know you don't give up and you keep showing that love that that there is a breakthrough. Um, I just I appreciated those stories in, in the book. Yeah, and I think one one thing that I felt like was really hopeful for women that's maybe a little bit different than we often hear is a lot of times we hear, okay, you need to show more love, show more love, but we don't really hear that much show respect to your husband, and it kind of um, almost sounds, I don't know, old fashioned maybe in a way like, yeah, we all want to be respected, but like respect your husband is, doesn't sound like a PC thing to say, right? That is not politically correct. (laughs) Respect your husband. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. it's true. So, okay. So with this energizing cycle though, there are some things that we can do as men and as women to show love and to show respect to our spouses And the idea here being that we act regardless of what our spouse is doing. And we take the initiative to, like James said, be the mature one, be the first to act. And even if we don't get the reaction that we're hoping for, stay the course. Like this is something new to try, trying these things to really, as women focus on respect, as men focus on love in the way that they're best going to accept it. And then you're hoping, of course, that they come along with you. And the truth is, if your spouse, you know, wants to work at this marriage, things are going to come around. They will, but sometimes it's going to take time. So James is going to start off for us and explain a little bit. So these are tips for women, things that men appreciate to feel respected. Yes. So he gives this acronym of CHAIRS. And he has, uh, I'll just go down the list and I'll, I'll give my opinions and insight. Obviously, this is a, a huge part of the book. So there's lots that, that I'll skip in there, but I'll just do my best to um, touch on what the acronym CHAIRS is. So C is for conquest. Um, and he says the natural inborn desire of the man to go out and conquer. Uh, he states that a man wants a woman to be, that a woman that believes in him and supports his effort for conquest. Um, I think what I got from this was why is it so important to express your faith in your husband, um, express your faith in in him that you believe in him that the chosen field even for his occupation is something that you believe in that he can do even if it's something that he doesn't like. I think you can help encourage him and tell him that you appreciate him. Um, just respect that desire for for man to to conquest and for um, his desire for you to believe in him. So the next was hierarchy, the H, a desire um, the author says that God built into men. Um, so to be a provider for his his wife and his family. This this idea of um, hierarchy, meaning that the man just really wants to provide and show that he can do it. Um, There's one thing that I really liked in this part here that he talks about, and it's respect letters. And uh, this, this was really cool. I wanted to share this with you in the book. He says, according to my research, men seldom keep love cards their wives send to them with all the little hearts, X's and O's. But I'll guarantee you he will keep a card you send him that says... I was thinking about the other day that you would that you would die for me, that this is an overwhelming thought to me, um, and sign it with all my respect, the one that still remi- admires you. And uh, there's just this little letter he got that I'll read. He says, um, I have received a respect letter from my wife. So this is a man telling this story. I received a respect letter from my wife. I was so amazed by this letter, I saved it. It clearly had a powerful effect on me. Not only did I save it, I read and reread it. I guess if there's one fan I want in the world, it would be my wife. And this letter seemed to fit the bill nicely. I was pleased that she did recognize some of my sacrifices. Not only that I'm looking to be a not that I'm looking to be a martyr, but the respect love cycle that you talked about is the right is right on the money. 
So this this guy got this letter and just felt so respected because his wife actually put it in writing that she she did respect him. And um, I don't know if this came from you. I was I stay in a hotel, gosh, probably every other week at least for work. And I, I got a really great letter. Was that from this person? Yes. Okay. <laughs> God, all right. We haven't talked about this. We haven't discussed it. Yeah. But I, I got this letter. It was really neat. And it just, um, my wife just told me how much she respects me and what I do for the family. And I, it did. It just totally touched me. In fact, I have it in my travel bag. I still have it. And um, I read it each night. I'm in the hotel. And because it's hard to be away from family. And so I just was so appreciative of that note and you know i've saved some other letters of yours i'm i'm more of the hoarder on the on the, in the family here um but i just really really appreciated that that letter yeah so about that i was gonna bring that up actually because i had read this book we had a a book club and the theme was marriage and we all read different books and I had read this book and I shared it with the group and I said, you know, I, I didn't love this book, but there was one part that I did like and that was writing a letter to your husband or telling him verbally, I respect you because of this. And I, I encouraged the people at book club, that was my challenge to them to just go home and try it, write him a letter or say it and see what it does. Because in this book, he has lots of examples of people doing this and saying, I respect you. And then the husband just like, just bending over backwards, doing whatever his wife wanted, because he felt the power of that, just like for women, when we feel that our husband loves us. And that's, that's the point here. And so that's one little thing. Thing that you guys might want to take away from this is, okay, how can I show my husband, verbally tell him, make sure he knows that I respect him? And I want to also add in here for women, like if you tell me you respect me, I like that. Like, I'm not going to say I don't like it, but I don't think it does for a woman what it does for a man. Oh, I think it's so true. I, I think it's so true. If there is one takeaway from this, I hope that, um, that you would consider writing one of these respect letters, it, it will just do wonders. I mean, even if your marriage is thriving, it'll still do wonders. So it's highly recommended. Um, okay, I'll go on. So anything else you were going to say no, about that? No, ahead. okay. So authority is another point. Um, he points out that men act responsibly and lovingly to be the leader that God has asked them to be in their families. That's an important aspect of this. Insight um, this one's kind of funny. You know, men often want to fix things and be the fixers, and sometimes that drives women crazy. But he just points out in this segment that, hey, you know, sometimes it, it really is important to just let your husband fix it. I don't think he's saying, hey, just pretend. <laughs> pretend that what he's doing is, is fixing it. But men need that sometimes. You know, men sometimes want to fix. And um, sometimes when you go to them with a problem, and they offer insight and you ignore it or just think, you know, whatever. I just, I don't even want you to try to fix it. I just want you to listen to me. I think you can point that out. But I think, too, it's important to recognize that he is trying to help and have that insight. So what he, the author saying, I think, is, is recognize that it's good for your husband to have some in insight and share it with you, even if it, as it comes across as him trying to fix it. Makes yeah. Sense. Can we back up really quick yeah. to authority? Because yeah. I, we, you touched on that really briefly. And I feel like that's one that, you know, in nowadays people might hear that and kind of bristle. Like what? My husband doesn't have authority over oh, me. Oh, they totally would. I yeah. Think. <laughs> so what are your thoughts for the, the people who just even hearing that word, like, I don't want to hear that. What, what is the relevance to the, the people who just are turned off by that. Sure. Well, I think there's scripture that, that we have um, in a book called Doctrine and Covenants that talks about unrighteous dominion. Mm. And, and I think that that's what I think of when I th think when we bristle, when we hear the word authority is because men exercise this unrighteous dominion sometimes. Like I am the authority figure over you and for this family and you will listen to what yeah. I have to say and what I'm going to tell this family to do. And, and that's so damaging, right? We don't want that. Um, that's destructive to marriages. So this whole idea of authority, I guess if I can give you an example of it is, is all right, so I'm going to be the one like that calls our family to prayer at night. 
Um, we kind of have this discussion the other night, and sometimes men need to be reminded of that. Or, hey, I can be supportive of my family by being the authority figure to, we have four boys. I'm going to show them what it's like to respect a woman. I'm going to teach them this. I'm going to demonstrate what righteous dominion looks like, um, how to be the authoritative figure by being an example of goodness and righteousness. I, is, what other thoughts uh, do you have about authority? Just I love that. I'm so glad that you said that because I think it can be taken really wrong, but when it can be lived really right. And what I hear you saying and what I see you doing in your life is that, yes, it's authority, but it's not like I am the boss of you. It's not like that kind of authority. It's just this idea of, of leadership in the best way. We want our kids to be leaders. We also want our husbands to be leaders. And when we allow them to do that and we allow them to step into that role, that's powerful for them and it's powerful for us. I guess maybe you can give an example to the listeners of what leadership looks like from men because that is something that's so touchy these days. Yeah. Um, where, gosh, it's like, I think we've done it to ourselves in society because we have disrespected women so long. Maybe society, maybe men collectively, but what what does it look like to you to have a husband show authority in the home? Yeah. So one of the things, like you said, is taking the initiative. So often it's the mom and we feel burdened and overwhelmed, like, oh, I have to do this and this and this and get the kids doing this. And yet if a husband can step up and say, hey, obviously we all need dinner tonight what does each person need to do to make that happen and kind of be the organizer because so often women take that role on themselves and and I don't think that's a bad thing uh, that's a lot of times what women do and are meant to do but when men step into that e- even like with family scriptures like you said or even like okay the kids need to do their chores everyone knows this we've in our family we've got saturday chores But do I always have to be the boss of that? No, it's amazing when James steps up and is the authority and and I can just turn things over to him. And so that's obviously with the kids and not with the wife, but that leadership in the family and discussing and we're a united front. I think to me, that's where that authority piece comes in. So good. Thank you. I'm I'm so glad that you brought us back to authority because I did kind of go over that. I think with a lot of points in this book, they could be taken as very, oh, I just sexist. not PC, sexist. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and that's kind of why I think Chanel was saying at the very beginning, like, yeah, I don't know if I recommend it, but I think you really have to read the book in the mind frame of, hey, we're not looking to be sexist with this author's not looking to be sexist. We're, we're just looking to fix a problem. Yeah. Here. Find solutions. And I think that, well, I won't get into all that, what I think about society and how they do that, but I'll just, <laughs> I'll just say that we, we can go a long way in the relationship by, by showing respect, by men taking the rightful, I don't know if I want to say rightful place, just, um, See, now I'm all being trying to be PC, right? <laughs> I think that you could have a good discussion with your spouse on what it looks there like to have authority in the home. How about that? Yeah, that's perfect. Great. All right. So I'm going to go over these next few ones here and finish up with the acronym of CHAIRS. We're on R for relationship. Um, the author points out, appreciate his desire for shoulder to shoulder friendship. So he talks about this example of a guy that invites his wife to come watch TV. The guy says, hey, you know... Not like that. He says, hey, <laughs> that sounds me. Hey, woman. Hey, woman. No. Hey, come watch TV with me. Uh, and I think it was, it started out, hey, come sit with me. And then he turned on the TV and she's like, well, surely you, you have something to say to me, right? Like not just to like watch TV with you. And the guy's like, no, just, just watch TV with me. Just, I want to just be with you. And she keeps bringing up in this guy's story, hey, well, like, do, well, what do you want to talk to me about? Like, what is it? You, like, beckoned me over here. What is it? And the guy was like, I just want to be with you. And so I think that um, time for men, he said, don't, under, don't underestimate just quality time together, just time together. And that shoulder-to-shoulder relationship, men need that. They desire that. Um So I think it's just something to be aware of that it's okay if um, you don't talk. 
Not always. Right, but, but it's not always what women kind of lean towards, right. at, which is heart-to-heart conversations. And, and we do want that. And I'll get into that of, you know, the women's needs in a little right. bit here. But I think it's a good point that sometimes that's that's a way, a men way of bonding. That's a man way of bonding. Yeah. No words. Isn't that weird? <laughs> it's just weird. So the final letter in this acronym is S for sexuality. And this is take three of this part in the podcast. <laughs> we had a few mishaps. Um, James got a little nervous. There was some, yeah, some redos. So anyway, here's what we want to say. Here's what women need to know about sex. I'm going to say it, and then James is going to correct me if I'm wrong. So men need sex. Women need to understand that that is a need. He points out men need lots of sex. I just Okay. Okay. (laughs) Men need a lot of sex. Women (laughs) need to recognize that they need that. And uh, men need sex like women men need sexual release like women need emotional release this is not something i got from this book but this is something i heard or read a long time ago men feel connected from having sex and women need to feel connected in order to have sex and so there's another cycle that we weren't even going to talk about in this podcast but it's really an interesting thing to pay attention to Men need to pay attention to how they're connecting with their wife, and women need to recognize that men need sex in order to feel even more connected. Any thoughts before we move on? All I heard you say was men need sex. (laughs) So I'm totally kidding. I'm teasing. No, it was a great section, and I just think that it's so important that we, we don't hold sex over each other's heads and that we're in a good place and hopefully out of this crazy cycle to where we can recognize how important sexual intimacy is to a relationship. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Now I'm going to talk about the other side of it, which is what women need from their husbands. He has an acronym here. It's an interesting acronym. I'm going to kind of just summarize the points because a lot of them go together. But one of the things that women need, they need to feel close to their husband. They need to feel this connection. I know we've talked about on the podcast before, greeting each other with a kiss, saying hello, coming up to each other and prioritizing that. When you wake up in the morning, like be glad to see your spouse there. Connect with each other. Show that you matter. I know for me, that is so, so important. When James forgets, which isn't very often, but when it happens and he walks by, I'm like, hey, did you not notice me over here? Like it makes me feel sad. Um, Women need non-sexual touching and just that spending of time together. Um, Women definitely need talking. They need that conversation with their husbands. They need to talk about little things, I would say, in order to be able to talk about the big things. When you are having conversations about, you know, how your day was and all those things, in a way, it's kind of scaffolding. You are putting up those, you know, first pieces of scaffolding so that you can build the building so that you can then get into the deeper conversations. And if you don't put in the energy as husbands to listen, to pay attention and to talk, then women are not going to feel safe to say the things that are really on their heart. The next one that I want to talk about is peacemaking. And I think this one is just so huge. Women need to come to resolution. We need to figure it out. And a lot of times that comes through talking it out, getting to the solution, figuring it out. And it really is also helpful when men say, I'm sorry. And I would say that's just as helpful for women to say to men. Those are just powerful words. And um, I would... Speaking to men specifically, I feel like one of the most harmful things that you can do when your wife is kind of worked up and needs to talk about something is to say, just let it go or forget about it. Why are you still talking about that? That is just like that shutdown is just so painful. It's Because for women, with our need to feel loved, we're saying, hey, here's how I can feel loved. Let me tell you all about what is hurting me and let's get to a solution. And when men say, don't even worry about it, it 
It's like saying you're not worth it, right? Yeah, that's exactly what we hear. And so it's so important for men, even though that can be hard, especially if then women are saying it in a way that men feel disrespected, right? That can be really hard. But you guys, that is such a huge one. Um, loyalty is an, another thing that he talks about. And I think this is important. The way that you speak about your wife, the way that you speak to your wife, the way that you speak about her, the way that you prioritize your time and your marriage. And, um, the last one is he, he uses the word cherish. And I love that word so much. I think as women, if we can be cherished and we know how much we matter to our husbands, then that just feels so good. That is like the feeling of love when we feel totally cherished. So that's just a quick summary of of these things that men can do. I really wanted to focus on this podcast about the ideas of things that wives can do. And so I'm glad we spent a little more time there because I feel like we hear a lot about... Um, this idea, you know, of what husbands can do. Well, husbands can do this to be better and husbands need to do this. And this is something, yes, there are definitely things husbands can work on here, but there's a lot here that you as a wife for the the women who are listening that you can do independent, irregardless of what your husband is doing. And that's the final point, the final cycle that he talks about, which is called the rewarding cycle. The rewarding cycle is just when you're both showing each other love, you're showing each other respect, and you're both feeling that regularly, and that is where we want to live. And if one of you gets on that energizing cycle, but the other's still stuck back in the crazy cycle, just be patient. Um, the uh, John Gottman, I have a quote from John Gottman. He says, the major goal is to break the cycle of negativity. And that's the goal, right? Get out of those cycles and get into a good cycle that really works for you guys. I have one final thought on respect, and then I'll turn it over to James for his final thought. First of all, we've talked about respect this whole podcast, but I wanted to get really deep on respect here and just define it for you. So we're talking about our husbands need respect, and we have a general idea of that of what that means. Respect, there's two different words. One is a noun, a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. The synonyms are esteem, regard, admire, appreciate, recognize, venerate, and honor. Now, when we think of respecting our husbands, sometimes our husbands do things that maybe aren't worthy of respect. And when you hear this word, respect your husband, and you hear all these things, a feeling of deep admiration, you might think, but I'm not feeling that right now. He is not actually worthy of my respect. And this book talks about something called unconditional respect. Unconditional, respecting him regardless of the way that he's acting. And I think that goes along with the second definition of respect, which is a verb to admire someone deeply as a result of their abilities, qualities, or achievements. The reason why I like the fact that it's a verb, it's like I've talked about before, it's choosing, choose to respect him, choose to find something that you can respect about him. Maybe it's driving you crazy that he is like a workaholic and going to work all the time or some, whatever it is, you know, but you can still respect the fact that he cares about his work. You can respect the fact that he cares about his appearance. If he's spending a lot of time at the gym, find something to respect, show that unconditional respect. And as you show that things will start to shift. Perfect. I, I love all those points that you shared. I really appreciate that. Uh, my my last thought is this. I'll share this with you. I was thinking while Chanel was talking that, gosh, don't all men have this little boy inside of them that just wants to be the hero, that just wants to be respected, that just wants to be told that they did a good job. And you know, I see that in my sons. If I can just tell them that I respect them, our relationship has grown. And, and I see that with my wife and I relation, our our relationship too, that, um, when respect is, 
communicated to me, it makes me want to do a better job. It makes me want to show love to my wife. It makes me want to keep going. And um, I think that uh, that's just something wired in men that they have from a very young age that they just want so much to do a good job and they want to be respected. And um, I I would challenge you again to consider doing that uh, respect letter and see what it will do with your for your relationship. Awesome. All right, you guys. Unconditional love, unconditional respect. The book, again, is called Love and Respect by Emerson Egrix, if you want to check that out. But here is my question for you. What one little thing are you going to do differently or think about differently because of what you've heard today? You can listen to podcasts all day long, but the important thing is what you're going to take action on. So take a minute and think about that. What are you going to do? Let me know on Instagram or Facebook at Moms Who Know Podcast. Share it with your spouse, share it with someone you know. And while you're at it, share this podcast. I appreciate so much when you do that. It helps us to grow. Thank you for being here and we'll see you next week on Moms Who Know.